mi mbroma miq ju falenderoj që jeni duke na ndjekur, son të eftua rajon në familia 7 vjen nga San Diego, Kalifornia. Një grua e përëndishme, një nën e tre fëmive me nipër, me mbesa, drejtu e se shumë studimeve biblike, forcen ndërkomtare në konferenca dhe radio. Êshtë cilësuar si një komunikuese e krishtere talentuar në mënyrë unike, shkrymtare dhe botuese. Shërbesa e saj në fakt shkon për te një skene, një platforme, një mikrofoni, një auditori, sepse zoti e ka thirur të ndaj fjalen e saj dhe kjo është e meli nga i cili ajo flet. Në studio me Caroline Johnson, diskutojmë si mund të kemi një jetë mbushur me frutet e lutjes. Mirë se erdhe në studion tonë, Caroline. It's great to be here, thank you for having me. Falem derit, është knaj si të të kemi dhe këtu. Në fakt, pëtja parë që dua të drejtoj, ti je një grua e përmbushur, zotit ka dhe në plot talente, i rritur në një familjet kryshter, tash më keni dhe familjen tuaj të madhe, por që keni kaluar dhe sfida. Cili është themeli ku ti timbahesh, Karolin? You're correct, I grew up in a Christian home. In fact, we went to church three times a week. We went Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And my mother taught me much about the Bible. But I came to a point in my life where I, um, I knew a lot about God, but I didn't know God. I didn't know him as my personal savior. I, I, knew, I knew the 66 books, I knew the 10 commandments, I knew uh, what was in the Bible, but I didn't know God. And so that's the foundation that I have, uh, built my life on is not just knowing God, about God, but knowing God. And that has, that is the foundation for my life, that, that it is God's word. And actually, that's how you get to know Jesus. It's how you get to know God. It's when you read his word mm -hmm. and uh, you let it, you don't read it just for knowledge. You let him speak into your, your spirit, into your heart. And it's life changing. So what I grew up, I grew up a, a good person, but it's so much more than just being a good person. It's about having Christ in your life, and He rules my life now. It's when the Holy Spirit came in and uh, transformed me. Por ke kaluar një jetë me plot sfida? Yes. Um, my husband has been in three automobile accidents where his car was totaled, that means they had to take the car to the dump. Uh, um, my husband has had cancer. He's had actually a mastectomy. My husband has been robbed and shot in the face. Uh, had a child that stopped breathing. Have had relationships within the family break mm -hmm. apart. I was sexually violated as a little girl. Those are things that are challenges and, and everyone has challenges in their life. But those are uh, things that either we're going to keep me away from God, or I was going to draw near to Him. And so the challenges have become a, a way that my, my roots, like, like the roots of a tree, when there's a drought, the trees that survive are the roots that go down, 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 mm -hmm. searching for water. And that's what I've had to do. I've had to go down deep with God to really seek His heart and His help, His wisdom. His guidance. Pra në gjithë to sfida ju keni qëndruar for duke mbajur të egzoti, duke pasur një themel me rend të forta të egzoti, por si është të ndërtosh shtëpin tënde të bazuar në parime biplike? If Jesus is the center of my life, then he should be the center of my home. It should be um, in the way I respond, not react, but respond to things. Um, and I want to I want to just say and confess that I wasn't the perfect mother and I, I wasn't the mother I would be today because I really didn't know Jesus back then. I thought I was raising a Christian children in a Christian home, but Christ was not at the center of my life then. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I came into that, what I call a crisis in my life, where I became uh, the end of myself, like, God, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, and I kept change, praying, God, change my husband, change my husband, change my husband. And God didn't change my husband. He wanted to change me first. And he, he radically changed me. But it was a surrender. And I had to surrender everything to God. 
my attitude, um, my, my, my way. Uh, women, you know, we women, we kind of like to control. <laughs> and uh, I had to give up that control and let God control me. Well, it didn't mean I had to let my husband control me. I had to have, do what God was saying. And again, it goes back to what his word says. Mm -hmm. And I had to build my home on that. So now, life is different. Po, pra duhet të ndërtojmë shpinton në fjallën e Zotit. Në fakt, Biblia na uzon uh, që ne të lutemi vazhdimisht. Pse është e rënsishme, e rënsishme lutja në jetën tonë? Prayer is not going to God and saying, um, here's what I want, here's how you can do it, <laughs> here's when you can do it. It is, um, and same with reading the word, it's finding out the way God works and allowing his timing and his way to work in all of my circumstances. And it, it has radically changed my life to do it God's way and not my way. I'm, I'm a woman that likes to take control and take charge. God is saying, no, let's do it my way, and it's always the better way. Por pse është rëndësishme që ne të ecim gjdo dit me Jezusin, të lutemi gjdo dit? Well, I think Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6 says it best. It says, uh, trust the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. His path is so much better than my path. Had I um, gone my own path, I probably would not be with my husband today. And you know, when I said earlier that I was praying God change my husband, change my husband, and God said, no, I want to change you. He did change me, and my husband saw a difference in me. And he said, he looked at me in the kitchen and he would say, what's different about her? I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that comes through daily prayer, releasing it to Jesus. It comes through uh, daily surrender and uh, reading his word. That's the wisdom. Më kujtohet të një varg të kpsalmi 66 në Bibel, ku thua që Zoti e ka dëgjuar me siguri i ka, kujdu, i ka kushtuar kujdes zërit të lutjes sime. Cila është fuqia e lutjes me gjithë zemër? The power of heartfelt prayer. Um, well, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, this word is just as alive today as the day it was written because it was through, written through the power of the Holy Spirit. So it speaks to me. When I pray, I use my words, I use my heart, my thoughts. Sometimes I ring, read hymns and, and, and uh, they become my prayers. Or I read psalms and they become my prayer. Or out of my heart's cry, the power is that I'm connecting with heaven and I'm praying not my will, but thy will be done. A ka situata në jetën tënde që ti e ke par fuqin e lutjes? Ke e ndoj një dëshmi për të na të reguar? I have many, uh, many, but uh, the one that comes to my mind this very moment is the power of prayer for, of three generations. I had an aunt. Um, she was an atheist, socialist, registered communist and she had nothing to do with Jesus. We wouldn't even be allowed to say the name of Jesus when we were in her home, even at Christmas. My grandmother prayed for her until she died. At that time, the Lord had worked in my father's life and my father now believed in Jesus and prayed every night and he would get on his knees every night and pray for his sister's salvation. And I remember when my father died, I was standing, looking at his body. You know, he was no longer there, but I was, had my hands on the side of the casket. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly. He said, now it's your turn to pray for your aunt, mm -hmm. who was still living. Mm -hmm. So for 12 years, every night, every night, before I got into bed, I would get on my knees and I would pray for my aunt's salvation. And she had early form of Alzheimer's, uh, but 
I kept praying and one day the Lord said, this is the day you're to go up to see her. I lived in San Diego. She lived in Los Angeles. It's about a three and a half hour drive. So I drove up there and I went to go see her and I walked into where she lived, a, a home for people who have Alzheimer's. And I went up to her, she was in the lobby and I went up to her and I said, Aunt Elna, this is Carolyn. And she looked at me so confused and she said, who? And I said, Carolyn, your niece. She said, who? Well, I'm Erling's daughter, your brother, Erling. I'm the daughter. Oh, how is your father? And I said, oh, he's been dead for a while. And I thought, you know, I've never been allowed to say the name of Jesus around her, but she's not going to remember it anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to mention the name of Jesus. And I said, and Elna, I want to talk to you about Jesus. And her mind became crystal clear mm -hmm. because there's power in the name of Jesus. And she could talk about everything and everyone. She, her mind was right. And within 10 minutes of being with her, she was asking Jesus into her mm -hmm. heart. You know, I hadn't led many people to Jesus at that point. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if this is going to take. She's been married five times. She was married with, you know, living with the sixth man. She's an atheist, socialist, registered communist. And I'm thinking in my mind, what if, what if this doesn't work? <laughs> And so I had her pray the prayer, not once, but twice, just in case the first time didn't work. And of course, the first time did work. But mm -hmm. the last two weeks of her life, I heard that she could only say one name. One word, she said. The last two weeks of her life, and it was the name of Jesus. And she said it over and over and over and I know, I know I'm going to see her in heaven someday. I bet the whole family up there is, was shocked to see her walking through the gates of heaven. But see, that's three generations of prayer. And sometimes we want to pray and have God just answer our prayer, mm -hmm. like right away. But God in his mercy and in his grace and his plan, he, he's the one that saved my aunt, not me. Jesus did it. Shumë bekim, kjo është fuqia e, e lutjes, e lutjes me besim edhe e fuqis e Zotit në veprim. Uh, Caroline, uh, si mund tjetë qëndrimi një besimtari, pra që të kemi një jetë mbushur me frutat e lutjes? Mm. What comes to my mind right now is Hebrews 12, where it says, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our life. Uh, who for the joy set before him surrendered his life and now is seated at the right hand of God. And, and so I constantly have to fix my eyes on Jesus. That's the attitude that, that I and myself, I, I don't have the answers. I don't have wisdom. I can't control things in the world, in my life, but I can keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. That's my heart attitude. Ashtë e vërtet kjo që sa po thej, që fokusi yn du tjet atje, parvarsisht sfidave, e të mos ndalojmë në rrugën ton për të shkuar drejt Zotit. Pytja ime e fundi që kam për këtë intervist, Caroline, cili do t'ishtë e një inkurajim, për gjitha ta që po në ndjekin, për gjitha ta shikues të të vështat që ndoshta në këtë moment janë duke u përbalur me sfida, apo përbalen me sfida vazhdimisht? I'm going to tell you just very quickly what part of the message is that I'm going to give to those women. And it comes from Isaiah 61. Let me read it to you. The Spirit of the Lord, Sovereign Lord, is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. And I think that we can get so enveloped, so uh, into our problems that we don't realize that God has a call on our life. He's a call on your life and you're fulfilling it right now to bring good news to the poor. And it's not just the financially poor, it's the emotionally poor, mm -hmm. those who are um, relationally poor, those who are poor in their health. He has called you and I to proclaim good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. And there are people who are brokenhearted. They have broken dreams, broken lives, broken futures, broken finances. Again, broken health, broken, uh, just brokenness, broken families. And he has proclaimed freedom for the captives. And there's lots of captives. Those who are captive to drugs, sex, alcohol, a bad thought life, habits, um, porn, gambling, alcohol, drugs. I, it just You can be captive to so many things. And then it says, and release from darkness for prisoners. There's darkness because of depression. Darkness because of... Uh, of uh, just the way the world is going. Mm -hmm. Maybe things in Albania, there are people out there that, that they're so concerned about uh, where is this country headed? I'm concerned about that for my country too. And it can be darkness because of what's happening in the world, darkness because of loneliness, uh, mm -hmm. disease. Is someone struggling with a, um, a terminal disease? There can be darkness to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, those who mourn over sin and shame and regrets, uh, maybe sin of other people and how it's impacted their life. And then it goes to say, and provide those who grieve in, in Zion. Zion means parched land. So those who, who grieve, maybe, they grieve over their life, over their choices, over decisions and things that have happened. And he says, he is calling us. And this is scripture about Jesus, but it applies to our lives. He has anointed us to proclaim the good news to the poor, to the brokenhearted, to the captives, to the darkness, and those who mourn and grieve, and to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy, you know, the oil of joy represents the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And instead of mourning, a garment of praise and a spirit of despair. And I believe that uh, if you really look at the context of this, the chapter before, two chapters before, it says you have to repent, you have to confess of your sin. So if you're going to uh, fulfill that scripture, you have to confess, you have to uh, repent. And then I love Isaiah 60, because this is just before this, arise and shine. And I, I love to think of it as we arise and shine and, and run with the sparkle. <laughs> we are to, um, to be the light for the world. These are very, this is a very dark world. Mm -hmm. And we are to be the light. How are people going to be attracted to Christ if we're... we're dealing with the just in in our own power to do things to to control things to to take care of things when we allow the holy spirit his word through prayer to come into our lives so we can arise and shine and run with a sparkle and then help others mm -hmm. he's called all of us to minister to others Për të të Zotin a ka thirë urgjithve për të shpërndarë në gjilin, për qënë dritë për këto botë edhe fjala e Zotit ka fuqin për të cilë shërim fizikë edhe emocional shpirëtëror për, për gjitha ta që ka nevoj. Dua të të falenderoj edhe unë uroj shumë bekime për ty, për familjen të ndë edhe për shërbesën të ndë. Blessings. Miq, fjala e përëndisë është e meli fort për jetën e gjithë se cilit. Në mes të një jetët të bombarduar nga vetmia, depresioni, dhimbja, asë gjitha asë kush nuk mund të të nëzjerë nga ty përveç se duke besuar se fjala e Zotit, Biblia është e fuqishme të të nëzjerë nga gjëndja jote. Ne rikëthejemi pas pak në studio.